Hi everyone, this run is covering Dimensions N, Entropy Tier 9, Reckoning Stage. And before heading further into the video, really apologies in advance because this is going to be a very long fight. I've sped up the video by one and a half times to try to shorten the length of the video and I'll also include timestamps in the video description so you can use that to skip ahead. But essentially, the party that I'm using is a little bit undergeared for this stage, especially since this stage has 60 million HP per boss for a total of 120 million HP. So for the most part, the fight here with this party is a slog fest. I actually plan on redoing this stage once I get hold of Vincent's burst weapon. His burst weapon will make the fight significantly easier. But I wanted to not token for his burst weapon until each banner comes later this week. I did pull for Realm. I got her LD on the first 10 ticket pull which was extremely lucky. And I didn't really feel like sinking in more resources on the banner. I was thinking I might as well just you know spend my resources on another banner that has Vincent's BT. So each banner it is. So a little bit about the mechanics of this fight as well as the party setup that I use. First off, I'm using a party of Vincent just up to his LD and I did have Vincent's blue armor. Next I have Sephiroth with base BT. I didn't even book his BT because I'm not very interested in Sephiroth. I'm just mainly using him for the synergy boost for this stage. And Sephiroth has high armor that's just realized. Lastly, I have Galuf, which is newly C90, and Galuf has a realized high armor, but I didn't also spend any ingots on his high armor. Moving on to the mechanics of the stage, the boss's hardest hitting attack is their recast attack, actually. By itself, it doesn't actually do a lot of damage, and you can withstand even two recast attack back to back, especially since you have Galuf. Uh, evading the attack. However, as you can see right here, at certain points in the fight, the bosses will grant themselves 5 generic buffs, which significantly increase their stats. So it can get a little bit dangerous if they also have a full recast bar when this happens, because then their recast attack becomes significantly stronger. And it can kill you if you take one with uh, buff and also if they have significant brave starting the attack. Next up, at certain thresholds in the fight, such as this, the bosses will also grant themselves a 1 million brave shield. And to note, this is not an HP shield, it is a brave shield and it absorbs brave attacks. Now, it is really more an annoyance than anything. However, if their brave shield is up when they have a full recast bar, you then have difficulties in cleaning off their brave and you know you then have to eat their brave in a massive recast attack. Sephiroth can help here because he his EX is instant break, so that's one option. Alternatively, you can also pile on set for poison effects or use call abilities such as Ferris or Maria to get around the brave retention issue. By far, I think the most tricky thing about the stage is actually the Lufania Orb maintenance. The Orb actually starts at a count of 30 and will only minus 1 on player action. By itself, that sounds like there's a lot of leeway and it's pretty comfortable. However, the Orb will also minus 3 for every buff that the bosses grant themselves. And since they grant themselves 5 buffs at certain HP thresholds, this means that at those thresholds, the orb will also have a whopping minus 15 unless you can somehow prevent them from buffing themselves. You cannot pile on framed debuffs because before the bosses buff themselves, they will also cleanse 5 debuffs from themselves as well. And this also includes framed debuffs except of course the gold framed debuffs. There are technically two different ways to prevent the bosses from buffing themselves. The first of course would be the easier one which is Vincent's BT Aura. So Vincent's BT Aura has an effect that also prevents any buffs on the enemy party. 
So while it is up, you don't really have to worry about the Lufania Orb, and that's why Vincent's BT makes the fight significantly easier. The second, more challenging way is to potentially make use of Aerith or Yuffie's debuff. So Aerith with her LD debuff and Yuffie with her no cheating debuff can prevent enemy buffs. However, don't forget that the bosses will cleanse 5 debuffs before granting the buffs on themselves. So this means that you need to position those debuffs to be on the 6 to 8 slot which is kinda tricky. The other thing to consider also of course is that both Ares and Yuffie are kinda outdated in the DPS department and this fight is a 120 million HP fight so you are also going to be handicapping yourself on the DPS front if you bring either Ares or Yuffie to this fight. In total, there are 6 times in the fight where the bosses will cleanse 5 debuffs and grant themselves the 5 buffs and if you are not running Vincent's BT Aura, my recommendation is to actually memorize all 6 HP thresholds so that you can prepare for the whopping minus 15 on the orb. I'll also be including details about the HP thresholds in the video description and of course I'll be releasing an infographic with the mechanics but essentially for the commentary, these HP thresholds that you need to watch out for are the 89%, 59%, 49% and lastly 29, 19 and 9%. The idea really is that once they minus 15 the orb, before the next HP threshold, you should try to uptick the orb until it is past 20 so that the next minus 15 will allow you some leeway to uptick and maintain the orb again. There are certain times in the fight where this is especially tight. For example, the bosses will grant themselves 5 buffs at 59 and 49%, so you only have 10% boss HP to uptick the orb to a comfortable level. And the more difficult phase is the last 30% because at 29, 19, and 9%, every 10% HP, which is they will also do the same thing, and it can get very difficult to maintain the orb there. Don't forget, however, that you can pause the orb inside burst mode or summon mode and the bosses will grant themselves the buffs even inside burst mode or summon mode. What this means is that if you bring them to one of the HP thresholds while you're inside either BT or summon mode, you will prevent the minus 15 on the orb and therefore allow you enough room to recover and maintain the orb count. For this reason, my recommendation is to save BT mode and use it before the 49% threshold, so somewhere around 50 or 51% would be the ideal time to pop BT mode, and save summon mode for roughly around the 19% threshold, so that the bosses will minus 15 the orb at 29%, you pop summon at 20 or so percent, and you prevent the next minus 15, and this gives you the additional room to build up the orb count before the bosses buff themselves again at the last 9% threshold. Increasing the Lufania orb can be a little bit tricky as well. There's only two ways to, to increase the orb. The first is the boss needs to take a turn, and if the boss has a gold frame debuff when they take their turn, the orb will plus 2 at the end of the boss's turn. So this is where Sephiroth or Kadaj comes in if you have either of them. Laguna's gold frame debuff can also work, but his gold frame debuff is extremely limited since it's tied to his PT. Next up, you can plus 4 both bosses orb if you can inflict 4 debuffs on a single action. This is 4 total debuffs, so even inflicting 2 debuffs per boss will be able to satisfy the orb requirement and update the orb. I actually gave Vincent a Laguna Refined Sphere. And this helps because when Vincent does his EX, his EX only does one debuff per boss. However, with a Laguna Refined Sphere equipped, Vincent's EX will also debuff uh, Max Brave down, and therefore his EX will also uptake the orb, which really helps a lot in this fight. You can also use Realm to uptake the orb. Realm has two E Sphere slots, 
So you can give her two different refine spheres that can inflict debuffs, and this will allow her tentacle attack to also uptick the orb when she gets her free turn. So a little bit about the strategy with this team. For the most part, it is pretty straightforward. You have Vincent applying his debuffs and maintaining the orb. You have Sephiroth dealing damage, and you have Galuf tanking for the team. Since my party is pretty underdeveloped though, you have to be very judicious in terms of the skill use. On the one hand, you can't be too conservative because this party is a little bit behind on the DPS and I actually completed the fight on turn 98 out of 100 so you can see how, how tight that was. But you also have to plan your skill users carefully so that you can maintain the orb. Because this is a very very long fight at 98 turns, this means that you need to keep very careful management on the buffs and debuffs, chief of which is Sephiroth's gold frame debuff which you can only reapply on LD use, so I only use his LD when his gold frame debuffs needs a refresh. The next is actually Vincent's overhead, so Vincent's overhead is actually quite limited in a 98 turn run um, and this means that you should really only use Vincent's LD when you need to refresh his overhead at 1 or 2 turns remaining. Importantly also is Galuf's buff management, especially his cover. So over the course of the fight, you need to keep an eye on the cover buff on both Vincent and Sephiroth. Especially Vincent with his high turn rate, he will eat through cover very very quickly. If cover drops off and Galuf doesn't cover, you will lose an opportunity for his counter attack which translates to a DPS loss. Now in terms of call abilities, I actually went a little bit overboard on defensive calls. I had Warrior of Light call on Galuf mainly for emergency uh, damage absorption and then I have Seymour LD call on Vincent. And that's actually more for dispelling the generic buffs. Like I said earlier, it can get pretty dangerous if the bosses get all their 5 generic buffs up right before they do their recast attack. I've actually lost 1 or 2 runs when that happened. So Seymour base and LD call is there to actually remove the generic buff from the boss and technically reduce the incoming damage from the recast attack. The Maria LD call on Sephiroth is also for the same reason and that's more for protection when the bosses such as here retain huge amounts of brave before they do their recast attack. So if you have Maria's LD debuff up, she will at least gravity shave their brave down to zero and reduce the incoming damage from the recast attack. Something that will also help is to try to split the boss's recast attacks such as here so that you don't have to eat two recast attacks back to back. There's many options to handle the recast attack as well. Although you can't dodge the recast attack, you can use call abilities such as Raijin LD call for example to reduce the damage as well. In my opinion, it is probably better to equip one or two defensive calls for when they are about to use their recast attack while the generic buffs are up. In my run, I use 3 defensive calls which like I said, I think is a little bit overkill but uh, this is one example as you can see here, I came pretty close to wiping right here. Maria call is also a little bit useful because right here I used a base call to provide some healing to the party as well. If you do use defensive calls, Try to really save the calls for instances where your party members are hurt but the bosses are about to use their recast attack or if two recast attacks back to back are incoming or if the bosses are about to use recast attacks while their 5 generic buffs are up. Beyond those times, you should be able to comfortably tank recast attacks especially if you have a strong debuffer like Vincent in the team. Anyway, that's it for the commentary here. So as always, if you enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. It really helps a lot. Till then, see you guys in the next Lufania fight. Bye!
そろそろ時間だ取っておけ悪夢を見せてよ取っておけ誰も止めようよ悪夢を見せてやろう取っておけ
Yeah. 